welcome back you guys. Very, very interesting build that we're going to be working on tonight. Um, obviously we're going to have some challenges. If you guys had had the opportunity to see the cover picture, then you know that this is going to be a repair build. So uh, I'm going to give you the backstory, then we're going to go into some of the extremely rough damage on here. So uh, a customer reached out to me and obviously there was some damage on their slide, wanted to know if it was could be corrected, does it need to be just replaced, what options do they have, and uh, what's it going to look like? You know, are we just repairing a slide or are we attempting to do some kind of customization to a two-in-one where we're fixing a problem and we're also getting a custom uh, piece in the end? And that's kind of what we're after here. We're after uh, not just repairing a problem. If that's the case, we might as well replace the slide. We are after repairing a problem and coming out on top with something that's a little more uh, show-ish, okay, on top of what would be just a factory slide. So let's kind of go through that process. I had a call with this customer. Um, from what I gathered, it was some kind of water damage. There was some kind of flooding. This was submerged for quite some time. And of course, it ended up um, eating into the actual uh, surface of the slide itself. So not just the coating, but actually into, penetrated actually into the surface. Um, the serial number area is a good example. Also, there's a little Glock logo here. I'll, I will include some pictures, but you guys can see most of this is kind of eaten away. So <clears throat> one of the things that we're gonna do, and we're gonna kind of start from the easy and we'll work our way to the hard, is we also have the barrel. The barrel doesn't have a whole lot of damage to it. This is gonna end up going through black nitride, and we're basically just gonna get it back to a factory look. Um, overall, we are looking to just kind of solve the entire problem. We don't know uh, if this is some kind of uh, extensive growth issue where you know, over time, if it's rusted a little, it may continue to, to eat away. So we're gonna go ahead and just process that through black nitride and then it'll just be factory and we don't have to worry about that. As far as the slide goes, let's discuss the work and then I'm gonna give you my thoughts before we kind of go deep into the work and maybe, maybe some of those issues that we're gonna still have. So <clears throat> one of the things that we want to do is an RMR optic cut on the rear. We are gonna be keeping the factory dovetail. So this is gonna stay where it's at. We're gonna do an optic cut in this zone here. Um, we're also going to be doing Raptor cuts on the top front. So we want to be able to see some barrel out through here. So we're going to do three Raptor cuts, which is a traditional G26, G27 pattern on there. So three Raptor cuts on each side. Now the side work is really where the uh, complexity comes into how do we do something and how do we solve a problem all at the same time. So one of the things that we want to do is we want to shave the sides. We'll, that will take place kind of between here and go around the ejection side and then forward. Okay, so same thing over here. It'll start with basically where the rear serrations are just in front and it'll make its way all the way to the end of the slide, removing any of the factory markings that are on the slide. This should also get us the depth that we're after in order to remove the pitting on the right-hand side of the slide. So one of the issues that's still gonna be uh, remaining here is that around the ejection side, as you can see up in here, we don't, we don't shave the entire side. We kind of work around it and because we work around it, we are still gonna have a little bit of pitting left over on this edge. It's probably gonna be something around a 16th. We'll come back over in this raised zone. What we'll do is we'll knock that down uh, with an end mill, hopefully just taking off enough to remove that. We'll still see that uh, border outline, but what we won't have is any of the pitting on the top side. So that should fix our issue pretty much in here. Um, this does go onto the top a little bit. It's onto the roll. We don't have to worry about the top so much because we're going to be doing an optic cut that is going to come down into the side of the serrations a little bit. So that edge is going to be all kind of all taken care of. Uh, the only other issue I really see is just this big zone here. So I think the way to approach this at this point in time, and I'm going to kind of take you guys through this, is going to be to do the sides, okay, and then kind of just come back and what do we have left. And we may actually just kind of show the, this is what the side pattern removed, looks great, how are we going to approach what's left? So we may have end up doing some sort of a split video here. Um, the other thing that we're going to be doing is not just shaving the sides, but we're also going to be doing the side window. So on our Raptor package, um, we usually see it a little bit more on the left-hand side, and that is a step down, and then it's simulated windows, and then it's real windows up front. So we get two real windows, some simulated windows. We don't get any uh, simulated windows on this side, obviously, because the ejection side. So what we do only get is the uh, the, du the dual windows in the front. So that's kind of the idea here, is do a real soft shave on the sides to remove. We're still gonna do the step down that we would t uh, traditionally see on our uh, side windows. And then of course, going forward, we're gonna see the Raptor cut. So everything's gonna look really, really clean. I'm really uh, excited about that. Um, like I said, I think we're gonna do some work. I think we're gonna bring it back. If we don't talk about it, we'll certainly show some of the damage as it's still uh, remaining here once it comes off of the CNC. Um, I do anticipate we're gonna end up doing some laser work over the rear grips just to absorb some of that uh, pitting that's in here. Uh, we really don't have a nice way of 
replacing and or removing the rear serrations. And some of this, once again, we'll do some pictures if we haven't done so already. Some of this pitting is on the bottom side, it's on the low side. So it's not, it's not gonna be as easy as just kind of shaving off the serrations and hoping that the top side clears the problem. We are gonna have to actually get into the low side and we're, there's really just not a nice way of doing that. So we're gonna end up probably utilizing the laser to do some sort of a grip upgrade uh, texture pattern over it, hopefully also uh, absorbing a lot of that uh, pitting at the same time. So I think that that's probably gonna be our best solution. In the end, we're going to end up doing a tungsten coloring. So, uh, tungsten is one of those one of those colors that we do happen to see a lot of requests for. It's a darker silverish gray color, uh, very similar to like a stainless, just a little bit darker. So that's going to go extremely well with what would be our barrel. Obviously, we have our irons. Uh, a lot of the uh, pieces on the lower half are going to end up being uh, black still. Uh, I do believe the customer is going to be replacing the extractor because we got some pretty nasty pitting on that. So that's still going to remain black. So it's going to end up being kind of like a tungsten black um, two tone gun. I, I approve of it, I think it's awesome. So with that being said, um, guys, I think at this point in time, we're just gonna jump over to the CNC, let's try to knock out some of this work, and um, let's just see what we come up with. Alright guys, let's take a look and see exactly how this came out now that everything is back together. Really pleased with the way it came out. We did have to make a couple of changes to the design because not all of the cut work laid over the bad portion of the slide. So we ended up having still some exposed areas that needed to be touched up and addressed. We're going to talk about that briefly. A lot of the pattern that we discussed at the beginning is still the same thing that was done here. We didn't make a lot of changes. Let's talk about that real briefly. Optic cut, customer provided a plate, so we cut that to the same depth. Went ahead and put the iron sights back on it that came with it. Customer will be able to put an optic on it and change those iron sights as they're needed. We ended up doing that side shave from the rear serrations forward, step down, simulated windows, and then real windows. Ultimately, this was a really good idea. It did remove a lot of the bad portion of the slide. We ended up moving it a little bit further to the rear. Typically, we don't go this far back. 
As you can see, we actually removed one of the serrations here. It is hard to tell um, because it is kind of a seamless look, but we ended up cutting it that far back because on the other side, that one serration had a lot of pitting in it and there really just wasn't any way to correct it. So we ended up doing a shave all the way to the back. Sometimes you just have to make those changes in the motion of the project. Um, you know, which direction are we taking and what's the best course of correction in order to fix this. We ended up doing a top edge chamfer. Of course, we do the back three edges, um, top and both sides along the top. The idea behind this was to make it match up with the cover and also because on the other side there was some pitting right above where the ejection um, or the extractor is the ejection portion, I should say. Um, so that was one of the reasons that we did that. Let's take a look at the other side here. Ultimately, really happy, side shaved, worked around the ejection side. There was some real bad pitting here. So if you guys watch the video right in here, there was some real nasty pitting. Um, a lot of that was removed with the side shave, but there was still some left over. I ended up going back through and did a fill before we did a color. So ultimately, it's a real seamless look. Um, we did a step down. We did the two windows here. We added those Raptor cuts on the front up there. Ultimately, I'm really, really pleased. Let's talk about the good side and what it looks like. So this is kind of what the rear grips look like so it was a reverse the diamonds were raised the material in the background was removed the idea behind this was to remove most of the um, eroded portion of the slide so that way we had more of a uniformed standoffish pattern and more of a texture based reverse pattern so I think ultimately that was the way to go Let's see if we can get you guys here a little bit better we will include some pictures if we haven't done so already so a little bit you can still see in through here but ultimately that uh, came out pretty good for for you know, how bad it was. Really pleased with that overall. Let's stick the barrel in here. The barrel went out for black nitride coating, which I do recommend on barrels as it is the most durable. And that is exactly what it looks like. Really pleased ultimately with the top rear cap, iron sights and barrel all matching. Of course, we're gonna have lower pieces in the frame that are gonna be black. I'm really loving the tungsten black two-tone look, not overpowering one or the other. Just a really nice look. And once again, guys, if we haven't already included some pictures, we will do so. Really just pleased ultimately with how it came out. I highly suggest that you guys follow, share, like. Uh, just kind of leave a comment. If you think it looks good, let me know. If you think something else could have been done, I'm willing to, to listen because we do have these uh, projects come along every once in a while. So I will take that advice and, and kind of move that into uh, some of our newer projects as we, uh, as we come across them. A lot of content on our Instagram, absolute ton of stuff there. You're going to start seeing new stuff that we just haven't done before. You're going to start seeing a lot of the laser stippling. You're going to start seeing a lot of other weapons that we normally wouldn't take in because the licensing is in place now. We've been waiting for such a long time, fighting with the, uh, the state, the town, permitting, just everything is behind us now. So I'm really super happy about that. I know a lot of you guys have been it feels like daily have been asking me where are we at when are we doing this how are we going to get to to get in frames and how are we going to get to getting our long guns in so finally we are there we're ready they can actually be shipped now and uh, or they can be dropped off in person so lots of opportunity there really pleased with that i want to thank you guys for following along it is a growing channel it is still an evolving and growing business um we've never quite had the licensing that we have now so we are going to start seeing other things that we just haven't done before. So I'm really pleased with uh, what opportunities may come along, what content can be uh, shown, and just uh, the, ultimately the comments of, of how you guys like it. Did you like it? Did you not like it? What were your thoughts, opinions, things like that. So uh, definitely uh, go over to our Facebook account. We've got a lot of reviews over there. You can, re you can read the reviews from old stuff from years ago, or you can probably read stuff from, from this week. Um, it's literally all over the board from people sending stuff in. Instagram has a ton of content on there as well. Um, if you don't happen to have an Instagram account, our account's not locked. You can simply just go there and view the pictures. Everything that's posted on Instagram is also posted on our Facebook. So if you don't have Instagram, but you do have Facebook, you're able to go over there. Um, we do have a parlor account now. So um, I don't know if you guys know what that is or not, but if you do know what that is, we are on there as well. We've been um, using it very little because it's still such a new app. But we are over there, so if you happen to have the uh, parlor, um, go in there and you can follow us along over there. And um, yeah, we really just appreciate the business here as a growing business. It's always good to see the customers continuously follow, come back, want more, new customers join the crowd, want to have work done. So all this stuff is really encouraging as far as a, um, a bottom line business that started in a garage and is finally into a shop with finally having licensing. So it's really crazy how... Um, 
how this has kind of all evolved over the last couple of years and a lot of that is just uh, because of you guys have uh, contributed to the cause and, and really just wanted to see the work or have the work done so I really appreciate that guys if you happen to need anything there is a contact tab we do have a number at the end of the video you can text you can email we do we do recommend email as that's how we process our orders um, but you guys you can uh, you can catch me on the next one